Hey everyone, Hussein here. So a couple of weeks ago, I released this video. This is using the motion design plugin that comes with Unreal Engine 5.5. So this is more of a in-depth overview rather than a full scale tutorial, because uh, it is actually a quite an easy um, scene to set up, not too complicated. I will mention a couple of assets that I used in this tutorial or in this uh, overview, where I got them and how you can also go and grab them but uh, I'm in no way affiliated with any of them. It's just that I use them to just to create this short product video. So let's have a look at what it's in the video here itself, and then we'll jump into Unreal Engine and have a look at how we can uh, set this up. So if you look at it, it's just camera zooming in, a bit of camera shake going on. And I've, I've got this hero object here. This hero object, I got it from a twin motion high tech pack, which I believe is not available in FAP anymore. So you can use any of your own assets for this. And then uh, we have a couple of other ornaments at the back, which are just cl being cloned and then uh, being used uh, as an effector. And also we have a backdrop, which I'll uh, show you where I got it from. Particle simulation happening, happening in the back there as well, using Niagara. And then we have some uh, camera motion blur. And that's about it, you know, and it's a bit of post-processing, okay? So let's jump into Unreal Engine and find out how we can set something like this up. Okay, at the time of recording, I'm using Unreal Engine 5.5, 5.54 to be exact. If you're watching this in the future, um, they might have changed a few things because they keep on adding and uh, moving things around in Unreal Engine, especially the motion design plugin. So you might probably need to look for stuff when they move it around. Okay. If you look at my project here right now, you can see that my sequencer is not actually moving, but all this stuff here is actually moving. So the idea of this overview or uh, the simple tutorial is to show you how you can use uh, the operator stack here using the animators to animate. So it's called a procedural animation. So without using any keyframes, you can achieve something like this. All right, so I'm going to jump into that in a bit. But uh, in my scene here, if I were just to jump out from the camera, you can see it's a very simple scene. I've got these objects, which I got it from Grayskill Gorilla. If you go to Grayskill Gorilla, they have something called a studio. You can actually join in and sign up. You can actually use the free version. With the free version, you can get some objects. This is how it looks like. So you can go and download the, the uh, studio version here. Okay, once you install the plugin, you should get something like this. This is actually a standalone I would say browser, and then you can go and look for, if you click on free over here, you will find that you have objects that you can use in your scene. I've put this together using the object from the Grayskull Gorilla Studio stuff. So I've got a couple of uh, panels here, which are basically your Cyclorama folder here. All right, so I've got about a bunch of them. I put them together. That's the, supposed to be the background. I've got a couple of these objects, and then uh, they are basically uh, a ball, and then we have a helix, and then we have something called a plus, which is this golden guy here, the gold color plus sign here. So these are just being cloned and also uh, being affected. So the main guy here is this um, this headphone here. Objects to do this uh, product reveal stuff. If I were to click on this object here, right? This is the hero object that I have. It's actually the it's a static mesh for headset. There's no keyframe for this. All I did was to add a operator stack. And in, in the operator stack, I choose animators. And for the animation, I chose pulse zero. Okay, you can actually click on animation, add animation. You can have a choice of uh, stuff that you can use. You have uh, bounds and all that stuff. So I use pulse in the easing function. I change to back instead of anything else because it's just going to go back and forth, right? It's going to turn. Then you can play with all this stuff. You can play a ping pong. You can choose to do once and it skips quiet and you can do a loop if you want to. In my case, I use a ping pong because I want it to go to swivel back and forth. And then you can change the cycle duration. I just played with these numbers until you get the number that you like. And then I add a link properties. The link properties will allow you to actually change the amplitude of the uh, the slow in, slow out that's happening in the uh, the movement there, right? You can actually adjust all this stuff. You can look at my numbers. This is 360 on the Z and then amplitude max is minus 10. I had to play with these numbers for a while just to experiment. So you can use this number so you can actually use your own, right? So that's the only animation that I add to the to the headphones here. If you can't find where the operator stack window is, you have to go to window, uh, operator stack, there you go, right? And then if you can't find the motion design tab, it should be under motion design outliner. So sometimes it doesn't pop up, you will have to do it manually. That is the headset. 
I used the operator stack to give it an animation. I did the same thing for the goggles, which is this this guy here. And then same thing for the Polaroid camera. And the reason why they are in the sequence here is because I'm changing their, their color as I go along according to this uh, the beat of the music here. So if I open up my SM headset, you can see I'm using the static mesh component to change from one object to another object. Okay, another one is actually to change the color as well. You notice that I have three different colors happening on the headset. So that should be under material, yeah? So if I open, expand this a bit, you can see I'm actually changing the material slot as well. So in the material slot, I've, I've provided three colors. If I click on my browser, you can see under motion, I should be able to see the materials. So I've created some materials. These are just some, some basic materials. I've got blue, chrome and all that stuff. If you look at my master material, it's just a simple material, right? just a base color, metallic and roughness. And then I convert that into material instance. You can change the color so you can change the metallic and you know, all that stuff from here, right? I just kept it to look like a plastic. So create a bunch of materials and then you can assign to that. And in the sequencer, you can actually change it here by using keyframes like what I did here, right? Just simple, straightforward stuff. So I'm doing this because of the music that's happening. And then I change the visibility to change to the Polaroid, which is the camera. And same thing for the goggles as well. So I just create some keyframes so they move in and out, right? And then we have a camera. The camera has a bit of a movement. For this one, you can use the camera shake that comes with Unreal Engine, or in my case, I used a plugin called Cinemotion. Okay, you can download, uh, you have to pay for this, but I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a much faster way of creating camera shakes. So I have it here, Cinemotion, and you have camera sequences, then you get idle, you got a movement as well, right? So you got all this uh, pan left, pan right stuff. If you click on it, it's just actually a, a camera animation sequence. You can just drag and drop it in sequencer. You get something like that, and then you can actually adjust how you want it. I find it easier to use this way instead of creating my own camera shakes, but you can, you know, it's up to you if you want to use your own uh, self-made camera shakes as well. So I've got an audio here just to synchronize the sound. When I take this into something like a DaVinci Resolve, I can actually can edit there even better. About this bouncing ornaments at the back, I used a uh, cloner to clone them. So I've got three cloners here for every three objects. If you open up cloner number one, you can see I've got this plus sign, which is just sign over there. It's just an, a static mesh, which I got again from Grayscale Gorilla. You can actually do it great on your own if you want to, right within Unreal Engine. Uh, there's a tutorial that I made to show you how you can create this. Look at my video list, you can, you can find them. I, I give it a metallic orangey kind of material to it. Add it into a cloner. Cloner wise, it's just a simple layout. Count on the axis one, count on y is two, and two spacing is 30, 60, 30. Twist factor, did a 15. I think you can do a bit of twisting in that if you want to, kept it at 15. And then I enable the range and I've got mirror enable as well. I'm just playing with this stuff. And if you look at it, scale minimum and scale maximum are the same. Uh, I added the effector and I've assigned effector one to it because all three ornaments are having their own effectors. So I've made them separately. So you can click on create link effect over here to create your effectors. Cast shadow is on, enable the range, enable the mirror, rotation, you can check the rotation. So that's the cloning. We clone them a bunch of times. And if I go to effector one, you can see that I used sphere shape. I changed the easing to inbounds, inner radius to 50, outer radius to 296, or it can be 270 actually. Mode to noise. Location strength is 2 to 2, and then I change the scale strength to 1, 1, 1. Frequency is 1. If I change this to maybe 5, you can see they move much faster at the back there. Okay, just put it to 1. And then I've got the forces enabled, orientation force enabled. This will actually spin them around. If not, they will be just static like that. They will not be spinning around. So I'm going to click on orientation force enabled. They will be just rotating on their own. And I've put in a force rate of two. If you put a five, they'll be going much, much faster. So I'll leave it at two. Orientation force minimum is minus 0.1. Orientation force max is 0.1. I've got the Niagara particles there. It's just a simple Niagara particle. If I were to control B to look for it, if you open up the Niagara particle, it's just a simple particle showing some dust particle moving around. I may have used a template for it. I may have changed the colors a bit, but it's this very simple particle, right? Nothing to it. As for the lights, I've got a spotlight in my scene here, which is actually casting a shadowy effect like that. And I've got my uh, atmospherics. I've got my directional light enable. I've got my exponential height fork. I've got my post process volume, which I just enabled a couple of 
stuff like your bloom. I've got bloom method set to standard, intensity to 2.5. Now I've got exposure. I always lock my exposure at one. Minimum EV at 100 is one, max EV 100 is one. This is my standard uh, stuff that I do normally when I do projects. I've got a bit of chromatic aberration two and 0.8 here, 0.8. But only thing I added is actually a, a spotlight, a sun spotlight to give it that nice um, light coming, hitting the background as well. And in the spotlight, I've created a gobo. It's actually using the material instance here. If I click on that. So I call it a gobo. If I open up my material instance, if I go to my uh, light function, I've changed the, the main node here to light function. Added a texture. This texture is basically a texture that comes with Unreal Engine. So if you go up to the texture here, we just type in noise, right? I use the one of this noise here, right? T underscore noise zero one. So what it will do is actually will, um, will block some of the sun. So it becomes like a gobo, right? I use the MF tiling here, which is actually another node. If you can type it tiling here, you can actually get this node, which allows you to then uh, adjust the tiling and also the rotation in, in your material instance. If I go back to material instance, you can see I have got tiling here enabled and then I can change all this stuff. You can see there's something going on there, right? A bit of nice shadowy effect that's happening at the back there. Take the MI gobo and you can just drop it into the light function material here. So we have covered almost everything. We know how to set up the, the hero object using, using the open the stack and using the animation. I've got cloners here for all three objects and then I've got effectors on each of them. We've got a camera in the scene, which has some camera shake on it. we we'll go to Content Browser. Let's go to um, Start the Content. Let's go to Props. Uh, let's bring in the chair. Let's put a chair over there. Uh, point three. All right. So I've got my chair over there. All right. Let's say we want to do a visibility track on this chair, right? So I'm going to go back to Sequencer. I'm going to select my, uh, select my chair and I'm going to drag it into my Sequencer. You can click on the SM chair, click on the plus sign and say, I want to bring in a static mesh component. And then for the static mesh component, click the plus sign again and look, if you scroll the scroll way down, you can something called hidden in game, right? And then here is where you can actually set the visibility. At the moment it's switched on. So if I bring my uh, cursor or the play hit over here, I can actually click up, uh, make a keyframe, maybe go forward a few frames and then disable that. So now my, my chair will disappear from the scene, right? That's how you do it. Okay. So you can actually create as many uh, keyframes as you want, right? So just an example how you do to do the visibility stuff. Okay. All right. I think that's it. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. I will leave the links to the Cine Motion for UE5 and also for the uh, Grayscale Gorilla Studio uh, in the link below. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's not a full blown tutorial. I just wanted to give you an idea of how this thing is set up. It's not that difficult. You should have a bit of basics of Unreal Engine. If you're not, you know, try and learn a bit of basics of Unreal Engine and I think you can do this at no time. All right, uh, that's it from me. So I'll see you in the next one and take care of yourselves. Goodbye.